Hello and welcome to my sixth cosmology video which is entitled The Hubble Constant Dark Matter and Dark Energy Solved with One New Law. In this video I give you the new law of universal propulsion of matter and how it will impact on dark matter, dark energy and the Hubble constants. So hang on for a bumpy ride. According to physicists who are measuring the rate of expansion of the universe using the Planck CMB model, the universe is expanding at a rate of 67.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. But that number disagrees with calculations based on the Hubble telescope observations of supernovae and pulsating stars, which is a significant 8.5% above the Planck CMB model at 73.5 kilometers per second per megaparsec. This difference is creating consternation in the astronomical community as only one of the constants can be the right constant or both are wrong. The Planck model is based on analyzing the history of the universe and computing forward from the Big Bang. Whereas the Hubble telescope model is based on observations today, now and the rate of expansion of our universe. This Hubble constant crisis is not going away. Cosmologists have been refining their calculations and checking and rechecking them, but the discrepancy in the two Hubble constants is becoming more entrenched as the accuracies in the measurements increase. The crucial point which this video is addressing is that the lower figure resulting from the Planck CMB model might afford further evidence of the failure of Newton's laws and the failure of some of Einstein's laws adequately describe our universe. You will find my explanation for this discrepancy towards the end of this video, but it will only make sense if you come to the realization that ours is not a gravity momentum universe, but is in fact a gravity propulsion universe. So please keep watching to find out more. But if you are impatient to get straight to the point of why my discovery will revolutionize cosmology and provide yet another proof for my gravity propulsion theory, please go to the last few minutes of this video. But first we must deal with the unsolved problem of dark matter. Dark matter was created by mathematicians without any regard whether or not it can exist in the physical world. This has got to be the biggest scientific mistake of the 20th century, followed closely at the end of the century by dark energy. Because of the discovery by astronomers that stars in galaxies have much higher velocities than they should have, mathematicians calculated that there must be in the order of five times more mass in and around galaxies than can be accounted for by visible matter. This mathematical delusion has resulted in a hugely expensive waste of scientific resources in a vain search inside and outside of galaxies to find the missing dark matter. And now after 40 years and hundreds of millions of dollars spent on research there is still no proof of its physical existence. I will tell you why it does not exist in a little while. And then there is the mystery of dark energy, which physicists could not explain. So again, mathematicians conjured up an improbable explanation for the exponential acceleration of matter into the void. They somehow decided that matter itself was not accelerating, but that space was doing the expanding and accelerating. Because of the, of the misguided interpretations of these proven physical effects, cosmology has been plunged into an acute crisis with lots of theories and dead ends, but no solutions. Across the globe there is an increasing awareness that something must be wrong with what Newton and Einstein tell us about how the universe works. There are calls for some radical thinking to get us out of this cosmological dead end. Either we come up with modifications to Newton's laws in order to account for the numerous anomalies or we come up with new science. 
Nobody seems to be able to come up with modifications to the laws governing the Newtonian gravity-momentum universe to solve the problems. But I tell you, there is a way of extending the laws governing the behaviour of matter in the universe. This law adds to Newton's laws. It does not interfere with them, yet it has a dramatic effect on how the universe works. And it also gets rid of the illusions of dark matter and dark energy at a stroke. I repeat, this law adds to Newton's laws. It does not interfere with them or replace them. And if you embrace this new law, don't expect cosmology or the universe to be the same anymore because everything will change forever. This natural law of universal propulsion of matter solves so many problems in cosmology which Newton's gravity-momentum universe fails to solve that his universe will have to be abandoned and replaced by the gravity-propulsion universe which opens wide the door into the new science of matter. A good place to start with new science is to formulate a new law. It is the law of universal propulsion. I'm calling it a universal law because it pertains to the universe and possibly to all matter at every scale. And this is the law. The law of universal propulsion states that because matter has the fundamental property of propulsion which is directly proportional to its mass, just like gravity is, as bodies of matter recede away from other bodies of matter, acceleration will increase by the square of the distance between them, according to the inverse square law. It is a very simple law. It is a natural, basic and fundamental physical law, requiring very little mathematical knowledge and it only requires a small amount of common sense to understand it. So in my universe, matter has both the property of gravitational attraction and of propulsion. That is why the universe goes around as it does and expands as it does. If you don't believe this, keep watching and I will tell you more. And there's even more shocking stuff at the end of this video. And now to test the law. If this property of propulsion is true of matter in every scenario, let us see if it works when applied to three of the most vexing problems confronting cosmology today. Test number one, dark energy. What is happening? If we are in a gravity propulsion universe and we apply the law of universal propulsion, as galaxies recede away from one another, we get matter accelerating by the square of the distance between all other matter. So the further away you travel from all other matter, the faster you accelerate, because gravity is diminishing by the square of the distance. I think you will agree this is also what the Hubble constant is describing, which is based on pulsating Cepheid variable stars and type 1a supernovae. What makes this phenomenon work is sublime. It is the enduring constant of the mass of matter, resulting in gravity being constant and the force of propulsion being constant. And so the universe works like a mechanical machine with an endless series of interlocked geared wheels starting with atoms and ending in the multiverse. You can draw some interesting conclusions from this statement. You don't have to have an exotic feedback mechanism to explain how the universe is expanding exponentially because matter is simply obeying the natural inverse square law. All of the propulsive energy in the universe is invested in matter and not in the space between matter. The reason for this is the same reason that the amount of gravitational energy is fixed as both are a fundamental property of matter. If that is the case, then the total of propulsive and gravitational energy in the universe has been fixed from the moment of the Big Bang. So you don't have to have exotic science to explain the illusion conjured up by mathematical magicians 
that the universe is harvesting dark energy from some other dimension or even more far-fetched from nowhere to enable it to pump itself up so that it can expand exponentially making matter seem as if it is accelerating away from all other matter. In the gravity propulsion universe however matter being self-propelled is accelerating itself exponentially into the existing void. So dark energy is redundant. Test number two, dark matter. You seek it here, you seek it there, you seek it everywhere. Is it big? Is it small? Is it so small that it doesn't exist at all? You are 40 years down the line and still looking ever more desperately for your dark matter particle because you couldn't find any star-sized objects by the billions surrounding our galaxy. The reason mathematicians invented dark matter was because not only are spiral galaxies rotating faster than they would if they were in a Newtonian gravity momentum universe, but in the outer regions of galaxies stars are also accelerating to much higher velocities than they should. In the gravity momentum universe the only way this can be explained is by inserting a very large amount of gravitational mass, mass in a gigantic halo surrounding the galaxy, like five times the mass of the visible stars in the galaxy. This of course would have the effect of counter counteracting the gravitational black hole and could explain the anomaly. But, but, not only is this gravitational mass invisible, its only detectable property is gravitational attraction. It has no other measurable properties. It does not have volume and its mass is only inferred because of the illusion that stars are being attracted to a notional huge dark matter gravitational halo. The curious thing about this strange matter is that it is also supposed to be everywhere around and inside us and pervades the whole of the galaxy, not just its outskirts. So dark matter is everywhere and nowhere. In fact it is everywhere and anywhere that mathematicians want it to be. You can see it working at a distance but when you get close up it simply disappears. It, strong, it strongly attracts the visible stuff we can see all around us. It also passes through it without interacting with it. It neither clumps to itself nor sticks to ordinary matter. I have to ask you, how can something be strongly attracted to you without sticking to you? So this wonderful magician's mag magnet both attracts you and at the same time repels and keeps its distance. And then when it morphs into a particle, it is strongly attracted to you, yet when it gets close up, it says, no way am I going to engage with you, and passes right through you in the billions per second without having any measurable, detectable effect on you or on itself. Why is it that we allow ourselves to believe such nonsense? And why do otherwise sound intelligent scientists dupe themselves into believing their own mathematical fantasies. And so, where to next? Well, there is a way out of this dead end. It is called the Gravity Propulsion Universe. If you put our galaxy, globular clusters or anything else into the Gravity Propulsion Universe and apply the universal law of propulsion of matter what do you think happens? I will tell you, everything behaves as it should. Stars in the outer reaches of galaxies fly as fast as they should because they are conforming to the inverse square law, which says as stars recede from the central black hole or other star masses and as gravity diminishes by the square of the distance, so acceleration will increase by the square of the distance. Stars in globular clusters have much higher velocities than they would have if they were in a gravity momentum universe, but they fly perfectly well at the velocities they should 
in the gravity propulsion universe. So where has the huge mass of the dark matter galaxy halo gone? Actually, it hasn't gone anywhere. It is where it always was, which is in the central black hole of the galaxy. And the mass of stars does conform to their luminosity, as you would expect if the stars are flying under self-propulsion, not just drifting through the void by momentum only. So, in the gravity propulsion universe, star velocities should be and are much higher than they would be if they are only able to function in Newton's gravity momentum universe. So now dark matter is also redundant. Test number three, the beginning of the universe. Tests one and two demonstrate that our universe requires an additional law to add to Newton's laws in order for it to function without the addition of endless caveats. That law is the law of universal propulsion, which requires a door to be opened into new science. The third test of this new law is a discussion about the Planck CMB Hubble constant and how the universal law of propulsion relates to it. The Planck CMB Hubble constant says that the universe is expanding at a rate of 67.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. I've already shown that the current rate of the expansion of the universe can be explained if matter has the fundamental property of propulsion. This property enables the exponential acceleration of matter according to the law of universal propulsion. This rate of exponential acceleration is encapsulated by the Hubble constant which uses type 1a supernovae and Cepheid pulsating stars to calculate a figure of 73.5 kilometers per second per megaparsec. There is general agreement that the difference between the two constants cannot be explained within the framework of the standard model of Big Bang cosmology and therefore new science is required to explain the 8.5% difference in the measurement of the rate at which matter is accelerating into the void and causing the expansion of the boundaries of our universe. If the Planck CMB Hubble constant is right, then the universe has expanded at a slower rate than the Hubble type 1a supernova constant says it has, because the Planck model is the lower of the two. The Planck CMB Hubble constant is based on the standard cosmological model, and so physicists are questioning whether any of the parameters changed as the universe evolved, making it appear as if the universe is expanding at a slower rate. The problem I have with the standard cosmological model is that it uses two mathematically created illusions to make it work. If you take away dark energy, the component of the phantom acceleration of the expansion of space, and dark matter, the phantom gravity component, and the biggest scientific mistake of the 20th century, you have to wipe the slate clean and start again. So now, if you want to know why the Planck CMB Hubble constant is on shaky ground, and why they have got to rethink the essence of their constant, please move on to part two or video seven in this series. In that video, I discuss the evolution of the early universe and why gravity became progressively more concentrated and why the propulsive force of matter increased proportionately as galaxies and clusters of galaxies evolved. Thank you for watching part one of my video entitled The Hubble Constant, Dark Matter and Dark Energy Solved with one new law. And before you go, if you have enjoyed my video, challenging mainstream science, think again about these big cosmological issues. Please subscribe to me or give me a thumbs up. Thank you.